Kinder Kinder Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Zach here at SecretsOfLongevity.com. And it's Q&A on Sunday. I'm a little late getting to this. I've been packing up, getting ready at my new place that I'm moving into, painting, uh, helping my girlfriend move her stuff over there. And yeah, it's been quite a process, but I, and I'm still in the midst of packing, but I'm getting this video in here. And the first question's from JazzyMan1990, and he's asking, do I have any tips for getting rid of acid reflux? And he's just commenting on the fact that there's a lot of conflicting information out, out there in terms of uh, what foods to eat, what foods not to eat, seeing different sites saying you should eat cucumbers or not. And yes, when you consider any health issue, if you really search out there, you're going to find a whole wide variety of different opinions from different camps. They're going to say different things. Sometimes they're similar, some things are very definitive of what you have to do. Some things, again, are very varied and will suggest various things. I'm very confident in suggesting that the very first thing you should try out and test on yourself to see if this helps is drinking more water, specifically pure water. Um, in the book, uh, Your Body's Many Cries for Water by Dr. Batman Gellidge, <laughs> I've got a link below to an article I've written about water and the ideal types of water and why you need to drink plenty of water. And actually at the end of that article I've referenced his book, so if you want to see his name and how it's written, you can check out the article and then go to the bottom to see how it's written because it's a somewhat complicated name. And he really talks about treating his patients with simply water for a whole host of variety of things. And one of the biggest things he talked about was acid reflux and how it's a symptom of uh, not getting enough water. And as a result, your body goes into not being able to produce enough hydrochloric acid. And that, in effect, is what causes the acid reflux. It's not too much stomach acid because you never see children with plenty of stomach acid getting um, acid reflux. Um, older people generally don't have too much uh, hydrochloric acid in their stomach. It reduces due to people's lifestyles. So actually being able to increase hydrochloric acid through drinking more water, first of all, is one step you can look at. Now if it's a mechanical problem such as uh, the sphincter at the top of the stomach after the esophagus empties into the stomach isn't able to close properly, then you're going to have to just be very wary uh, to not go horizontal um, or lie down or do anything that you're bending over or, or upside down um, within three hours after eating. So you want to have that food settle out. Um, I'm not entirely sure if there's a way to regenerate that part of your body. I'm sure there is. Just following a natural lifestyle that's going to be beneficial for your whole body could correct a situation with that if it's just musculature. But if it's a damaged area of your body, then it might be something you just have to take into account and uh, maintain uh, yourself upright at least three hours after having eaten. And in terms of specific dietary guidelines for acid reflux, I'm not going to give specifics on types of foods, but I'm just going to generally say don't overeat, because you can overeat on a salad and get over acid reflux depending on the type of person. You can overeat on uh, meat and like heavy protein, animal-based protein and get acid reflux, or you can eat too much fruit and get acid reflux. So it's dependent on your individual self and what you uh, jive with in terms of your intake of food, and then just don't overdo that. Of course, I would also recommend consuming more raw foods to aid yourself in moving those foods through the stomach quicker because raw food does digest quicker and doesn't sit in the stomach as long. And a general question I've been getting ever since I posted up the three-part series on uh, sprouting, doing uh, tray sprouts, uh, was where do I get trays for wheatgrass? And although I didn't mention in the video, I thought it was quite uh, obvious, but uh, any gardening shop in your area, you can get trays for this. You don't need a specific type of tray or size. You just need them, if you're doing them indoors, not to have holes. They need to be sturdy enough that they're going to last you long enough that they're worthwhile for cost. And this is really something you're just going to have to look for in your area because there's no specific brand I can recommend. There's no specific style or there's no specific website I can give you. Now, Twisted Barney has asked about Pyrocetam and choline as nootropics to for improving brain function. And Pyrocetam is actually uh, a drug, which I would not recommend, um, but it is used for people wanting to improve their mental performance, whether they're a student uh, at school, university, college, etc., or if they're just in a 
demanding career where they want to have optimal uh, mental function. So it's notably used in cases of Alzheimer's and aging of the brain, uh, seizures, dementia, all these things um, it's able to treat or even reverse in some cases, um, which is great if you have that condition and you're not willing to change your lifestyle in any way, shape, or form. But generally we can overcome these hurdles through lifestyle changes, which it should really be everyone's first choice because if you've been living a life that causes these things to occur in your body, then you've been living in a way that's incorrect with our body's natural way of being. So using a drug is like a band-aid or a crutch. It's not really helping uh, prevent or treat the underlying cause, and it's just doing a surface sort of um, tampering that in cases of extreme problems can be beneficial if there's no other options but there is always the option to change your lifestyle. Now choline is a nutrient that can be taken in supplement form and again I'm not a fan of drugs or isolated supplements, specifically synthetic supplements and choline can be derived from many plant sources that are high in um, things that break down into choline or have choline. The number one thing I'm going to recommend is buckwheat. Uh, either if you want to eat it cooked you can but ideally you want to consume it uh, sprouted or uh, full green sprouts. So you can sprout the dehulled buckwheat which is sort of a pale color, pale white creamy color and it's like a little triangular grain. It's actually not a grain, it's a fruit botanically but it's eaten like a grain and it's very starchy like a grain. But it sprouts a little tail and you can um, consume it like that or you can dehydrate it and it's crunchy and consume it like that. Or you can uh, get the buckwheat with the hull still on, grow it into um, a taller leafier uh, sort of salad green and it's very great in that way. Both the buckwheat grain and the sprouted full green leaf buckwheat are very high in lecithin which breaks down eventually into choline and this helps build the brain because the brain is largely composed of uh, lecithin as well as choline and it basically cleans out all the arteries to the brain as well as the rest of the body so it's great for prevention of uh, heart disease in all its forms and because it's in a whole food form, it's much more bioavailable to the body and usable and has the accompanying nutrients that help in its absorption and utilization by the body. Other great sources of lecithin are Hoshu Wu, which is a Chinese tonic herb. I've got an article below describing the uh, benefits of Hoshu Wu if you want to check that out. And of course, you can find a link below to a great Hoshu Wu extract, which is going to provide you with lecithin and many other beneficial nutrients for the brain and the whole body. Um, some other herbs that are considered nootropics, and when I'm talking about nootropics I mean any uh, substance that's improving to memory, cognition, intelligence. These basically supply more blood flow to the brain, nutrients and oxygen, and uh, they can refer to smart drugs, uh, memory enhancers, uh, specific herbs. And of course I'm going to talk more about the herbs rather than the uh, the drugs and isolated supplements. The first thing I'll talk about is uh, ginkgo biloba, which is probably the most well-known uh, nootropic in the sense that uh, people see it in drinks that you can get with ginseng or something, some crazy energy drink. Um, and it has a slight, slight uh, energizing effect in the sense that it's opening up the peripheral uh, blood flow. So you're going to have more energy in the sense that more nutrients are getting to your extremities and you can be more active. But largely it's increasing the blood flow to the brain, so this helps in uh, improving cognition that way. And all it's an amazing herb, it's not a tonic herb, so it shouldn't be taken every day for long periods of time, nor should it uh, exceed certain dosages, depending on your uh, body weight and size. A, a rough dosage of the loose uh, tea, or the loose herb, is to take one tablespoon, one level tablespoon, put that in a pot and pour boiling water over it, let it steep like uh, any other green loose leaf tea, and any, I find personally, if I use any more than that, I get a headache, and some people might need to use a little less than that. And it definitely does have contraindications for anyone on blood thinner medication because it thins the blood a slight amount, and it's not uh, recommended for pregnant women, nursing women, etc. Some other great nootropics are um, Go To Cola, which I've got a link below for an article I've written as well, and also Bacopa Monieri, which is. Um, basically almost identical to ginkgo except for a few key attributes. It's both grow in India and both have been used or called the other name respectively. Depending on what area of India you are they'll 
use them interchangeably in prescriptions. However, gotikol is a bit more of a diuretic, meaning it helps flush out water from the body, increases urine production. Whereas brahmi, aka uh, bacopa monieri, um, is more nervine, meaning it targets the nervous system more, so it might be even more specific for enhancing brain function than gotikol. Although both have that property, this could be um, the ideal one you might want to use. So I've got an extract here. Um, you can find a link below for this as well as any of the other herbs I'm talking about uh, at the links below in the pop-down box if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, another great nootropic herb is Macunia pruriens, and this is helping enhance uh, neurotransmitter production, specifically of dopamine. And so this has a mood-regulating effect. It helps increase our drive because dopamine is specific to drive. So people that have low dopamine or are dopey um, aren't able to get things done, which is sort of a classical thing we could talk about. Um, marijuana users have depressed levels of dopamine, which leads to them having the stereotypical inability to be productive. And for most people, I personally have seen that to be the case, although there are individuals who claim, and we can see that they are more productive despite their uh, usage of this plant. But that's another topic to discuss, and I have discussed in previous videos, but um, Macunia uh, is a seed, a bean, and it's ground down. It's usually heated at some point to help uh, counteract some of the anti-nutritive properties, which is just simply because it's a bean, and most beans um, do have anti-nutrients if they're not dealt with properly. I'm, I'm curious to see whether a sprouted Macunia bean could be uh, eliminate those qualities in it that are a bit harsh on the system, but the, the uh, processed macunia is definitely very safe to take in even slightly larger doses just, and has a very mood regulating cognitive enhancing effect. So we can use nootropics in the sense of enhancing our mental capacity when we need to have that available to us or we can use them regularly as a just a way of enhancing our intelligence to be um, better people in the world, to accomplish our goals, to move through the world with uh, clarity and focus. Now the last, um, I'm going to say it's a comment because it wasn't re really a question, although I was asking my opinion on this article someone sent me, uh, their username is Chilled and it was an article from the Daily Mail and I've got a link below if you want to check it out. It was pretty ridiculous, not in the sense that it was ridiculous that this guy to send it to me, but just reading this, I'm appalled at the fact that people are actually doing this with no um, understanding of health or what the long-term effects of this are going to be. And it's actually um, models, uh, specifically that's what they was talking about, but I'm sure it's being used by more than just models, are replacing one of their meals or even several meals a day with an IV drip bag in order to lose weight. And this is just another example of the ridiculous extremes people go to to try to lose weight and to get on these fad diets. And some people say it's less taxing on the digestive system, however, um, that's not the case at all because you're just burdening other systems of your body. And it's a quite well known that in um, surgery, if they open up your abdomen during, for whatever reason, if they're uh, tampering around with something in there, they'll actually stick the IV into your small or large intestine because it's better and easier for your body to absorb the nutrients in the IV bag. Um, rather than it going straight into your bloodstream. So it actually uh, uses your body's natural digestive ability to process what's in the IV bag. So it's not less of a burden on your body to take things directly into your bloodstream because there's processes that go on in our digestive system that we need to process things coming in and determine what our body does need and what it can use. Otherwise, we're just putting a burden on our liver and kidneys when we're on, on an IV like that. So doing this continuously... Uh, as a meal replacement is absolutely ridiculous and uh, these people doing this are just subjecting themselves to uh, ill health and it's going to have long term effects. And that's not even to discuss the fact that a lot of the things they put in the IV bags aren't optimal for our health anyway. They put synthetic isolated nutrients, um, saline solution, you know, that's just like salt water. Like who, who knows what kind of salt that is? Who knows what kind of water that is? I guess you could make your own saline solution and uh, feed yourself through a, a tube going into your arm, but really let's just stick to food and taking it in through our mouths, which is where it's supposed to go. And on that note, I'm going to say take care and embrace life without limits.